On tonight's show, the coach and I will review North Dakota's return to the ice and exhibition win over the USA under 18 team. We'll hear from Gage Osmus, the sophomore defenseman who has settled into his role nicely this season. And we'll look ahead as UND returns to conference play with a two game series against Minnesota Duluth this coming weekend. Coach, Happy New Year. Good to be back with you again. Your team returned to work a week ago Sunday after having about seven days off. And really, as you reflect on this past week, even including the game, this was a week of reconditioning and setting the table for the second half of the season, correct? Yeah, Dan, I think probably what you saw, you know, in our game on Saturday night mirrored a little bit what our week of practice was. You know, that first day back is, uh, is a little rough and a little rusty and things get better throughout the week, much, uh, much the way, you know, the hockey game on Saturday night went yeah. for us. You know, a little bumpy uh, in to, to start the game both mentally and physically. And we got better uh, as the three periods went along and, uh, and played a solid third period. Mm -hmm. One of your themes, I think your underlining theme going into that game was player evaluation. Coming out of it, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, it was, uh, it was one of those nights where it was tough to evaluate a whole lot uh, in the first couple periods right. because of the, the lack of uh, five on five play. But, you know, I really liked what Cam Johnson did. He, he went out and he had a good start. Um, you know, I thought some of the younger guys went out uh, and, and did a pretty good job. And overall, uh, you know, just in terms of team orientation, mm -hmm. we did a good job getting better. All right, Dave, when we come back, we'll take a look at the highlights of North Dakota's 7-2 to win over the under-18 team as UND now sets the table for the second half of the season. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back. Dave, it's become uh, kind of common practice for your uh, teams to play the USA under-18 team uh, between Christmas and New Year's. Well, I think it's a, it's a great game for us, you know, to be able to uh, play an extra ex exhibition game at mid-season. I think, you know, when you look at this year, the value of this game uh, coming off a week of practice before we get it back into conference play is of great value. Mm -hmm. I also think it's a lot of fun for our fans to be able to see uh, that talented group of, uh, of youngsters from around the United States uh, that'll be entering into, you know, in most respects, entering into college hockey next year. I think it's a great yeah. opportunity for our fans to see that flavor as well. No doubt about it. Let's take a look at the highlights. And uh, former Grand Forks Central star Nick Four had a chance to be the interim head coach for the USA under-18 team in this game on Saturday night. And you gave Cam Johnson, the freshman goaltender, a start. His only other start came December 5th against Lake Superior State. And uh, this was this a good building block for Cam Johnson Saturday yeah, night? It was. And you know, it's all it's all part of the process you know obviously his, uh, his first outing didn't go the way uh, we all would have liked to have had it go um, but you know starting right from uh, the day before through morning skate and getting into uh, that start uh, is very important for a young goaltender to work through Cam did a good job he made some early saves made a couple saves on a couple early chances how much did that allow him to settle into this hockey game yeah you know I thought he had to scramble for his first save there it was a tough one uh, you know and uh, I thought after that it was like uh, all attention just kind of dissipated in him mm -hmm. and he, he relaxed, he settled in, uh, he was calm and confident and I really liked what he did. Yeah, played almost 27 minutes, gave up just one goal. You think you maybe found your legs a little bit here as the period went on? We did. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there, you know, there, obviously there's an awful long way to go uh, as you drop the puck for the first time in yeah. three weeks, but I thought we slowly worked our way into the game uh, and, uh, you know, other than uh, the, the penalty kill, uh, issues that we had, you know, in the amount of time we spent on it, and we were pretty happy with it. Here's your opening goal on the power play, late first period. Tucker Pullman with the uh, rebound goal, but it was a good low shot by Jordan Schmaltz, and Michael Parks also had net front presence. Here. Yeah, you know what? Shooting mentality. That's what uh, Brad had been preaching all week on the power play. Let's uh, let's get the puck to the net. Let's get bodies there, and you know, you saw Michael Parks on top of the crease, Tucker Pullman with the yeah. downhill attack, and he finishes the play. So it's one nothing at this point. Second period now. You mentioned. The penalty kill. More time on the penalty kill than you really wanted to spend in this hockey game. In fact, in the second period, almost 11 minutes on the PK, but your PK, PK guys did a good job. Yeah, we did. And you know, I, we, we had nearly 18 minutes in penalty kill in this game, and that's yeah. obviously way too much, especially for an exhibition game where you're hoping to be able to evaluate some five-on-five -five play. But 
Uh, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, credit to our our, our PKers. Uh, they did a good job, uh, and uh, you know, and got us through some of those situations. Yeah. It's at the 12:02 mark of the second period. Then, after uh, killing off several Team USA power plays, you go to work here and make it two to one. And this play is going to start here, coming up with Brendan O'Donnell making a play in the defensive end and a lead pass, and and Jordan Schmaltz is going to go to work. Yeah, I think you know that's most uh, most good offense is generated off of good defensive play. Obviously, getting the puck back and. You know, it's just a play where the, the U.S. team kind of sunk in, uh, and Jordan found a hole on the short side on that yeah. tender. Well, Jordan Schmaltz, of course, his offensive instincts kick into gear on a play like this, don't they? Yeah, and that's just a good natural play. I mean, we want him uh, as well as a couple other guys back on the, on the blue line for us to be in attack mode, and yeah. uh, it's a good play to get up ice and get it to the net. 2-1 after two. Then you break things open here with a five-goal period, including three goals at the opening, 255, including the first one by Michael Parks. Great play here, short. Handed. Yeah, starting on the penalty kill, just jumping up, and you know we had our, our F1 was up there pressing, and we want Mike as, as the second guy to be up uh, in that spot, and he was right there, uh, caught uh, the U.S. player off guard, yeah. and uh, you know great hands play to finish that off. It's 3-1. Then just 40 seconds later, Paul Ledoux will play a, play a puck off the far wall here, and Luke yeah. Johnson's going to snipe it in. Good, good high cycle, you know, three high cycle play, and we get a puck to the net off it. I think this went off of somebody's stick. It did. Uh, and changed direction a little bit on the U.S. goaltender, yep. and it found that top shelf. Well, you mentioned cycle. You finally got a chance to cycle the puck a bit in the third period, playing yeah. five on five hockey. Yeah, and that was some of the things we wanted to work on. Uh, you know, a couple of different types of four checks and uh, a little different look with our cycling. Yep. Uh, we were able to get that going a little bit in the third period. Drake Kajula then at 255, the third of the three goals in the opening, 255. Five, because Julie moves in, makes it five-one here. Yeah, good turnover. Wade Murphy is uh, is involved in turning that puck over, and uh, you know a puck that squirts through the U.S. defenseman, and yeah. you know Drake from in tight there uh, made no mistake. That puck got upstairs in a hurry. It just felt like your team was getting more into the rhythm, whether it was skating, passing the puck in the third period in this game. Yeah, you know I think our energy got better as the game went on. You you know you skate some of the heavy legs out, and uh, obviously just being able to play five on five was a big benefit yeah. to us. Mark McMillan, Michael Parks have teamed up a lot in their careers here. Uh, McMillan with a beautiful pass right out of the stick of Parks. Yep, these guys, uh, you know, they know where each other are on the ice, and uh, that one was uh, nothing different. You know, not a spectacular play until you break it down. It's just a real good hockey play. Uh, again, with Mike's uh, stick strong on top of the paint. And you played all three of your goaltenders. Matt Harinku, your sophomore, got in for the final three and a half minutes of the game. Yeah, what a great thing for our hockey team. Matt uh, does so many good things for us. Uh, and he's in that unheralded role uh, where he just goes out and works every yeah. day and helps guys get better. And he pushes uh, everybody, not just our goaltenders, to be better every day. So wonderful to get him in there. Valuable game time for Absolutely. Matt Harinku. And, and well-earned game yeah. time, you know. 7-2 is the final as you pull away with the five-goal third period. Overall evaluation, Dave, of this hockey game, did you get out of it what you had hoped going in? Well, number one, we, uh, you know, we, we got the 60 minutes in, which we needed. We needed to play a game. Uh, I don't think we got the evaluations quite that we had hoped to yeah. because of the way the first two periods went. Uh, but all in all, overall, a positive night for our hockey team. And came out of the game pretty much healthy, correct? Which is always a must when you're playing an exhibition game. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, all right. Still to come on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtall. Sophomore defenseman Gage Osmus had a fine first half of the season. We'll also preview North Dakota's return to league play with a series here inside the Ralph against Minnesota Duluth. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables too. Two future North Dakota players were dressed for the USA under-18 team this past weekend. Defenseman Christian Evers and forward Shane Gersich. Meantime, three former products of the U.S. National Team Development Program currently skate for UND. One is defenseman Gage Osmus, who is coming off an outstanding first half of the season. Through 19 games, Gage Osmus has been a steadying influence at the blue line. 
Goose is a, is a big, strong guy back there, and you know I think adds a little different element than, than the other five guys that have been playing most of the year. And um, I think that uh, kind of is, is almost steadying, especially for the rest of the decor. So we we got a lot of offensive ability back there, and a lot of guys that get up in the play. And, and Goose maybe uh, is a little bit more a guy that sits back and, and takes the body, and his physical presence obviously adds to the whole decor. After playing in just half of UND's games in his freshman season, Osmus has seen the ice in every game this year earning the trust of his teammates and coaching staff and filling a role as the most defensive minded member of the decor. He's making us better and he's improving and growing his role. Uh, now the challenge in front of him, you know, you got to continue doing that. Do that this Saturday and, and, you know, do it every week here on out as we go through the second half. The first half definitely brought me a lot of confidence, uh, you know. It's the game of hockey is a lot easier when you have confidence in yourself and you uh, you believe in yourself. You can do a lot more things on the ice, and it's definitely a big part of the game is being confident in your play and just trusting uh, your skills. Osmus and his teammates say he set the table for this sophomore season at the end of last year. It was a recommitment to become better, a drive to be a regular in the lineup. I think the transition came for him last April, after our season. Um, you know, I think he had a mindset that he was not going to be denied, and I think he trained uh, that way through the entire summer, and I think that's the way he's conducted his business right from uh, last April uh, through to this day. You know, last year losing to uh, Minnesota in the Frozen Four, and I didn't dress that game. You know, it's it's tough, and after watching that game, I just I wanted to have a mindset that, you know, I want to be in that game, and. Uh, with defenseman Dylan Simpson leaving our lineup, you know, I knew that there'd be an opportunity to be there because he was a, he was a great defensive player and uh, he shut down a lot of good guys on other teams and I, I just wanted to, to come and come to the rink and play that role. Osmus shares the team lead in plus minus, a plus 10 through 19 games. I think it's a good stat for me because I don't obviously get a lot of points, but I like to, uh, I like to be a plus player out there because that means I'm on the ice. Uh, you know, and I'm having a positive effect on the game. Parks is set up in front. Osmus open. Oh. He's a hungry player, and uh, he's hungry uh, to uh, to help his team. Um, and he's, you know, he's hungry uh, to do as much as he can do individually. That's a good thing. We need we need everybody in our locker room to be like that. Coming up next, the coach returns, and we preview North Dakota's NCHC series against Duluth. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back to the show. North Dakota will play its next six games here inside Ralph Engelstead Arena. Their return to regular season play is this Friday and Saturday against Duluth. Dave, again, those six home games, Duluth, Niagara, and Colorado College all here in the month of January, a month of opportunity for your hockey team, wouldn't you say? Well, it's no question it's a month of opportunity, but I think probably the real key for our hockey team is, uh, is focusing one week at a time and this week obviously is an easy one to focus on getting back into league play uh, playing against Minnesota Duluth who has been one of the top teams in the country right mm -hmm. from the start of the year uh, so I think that's a real key is just continuing a real short-term focus uh, improving our team improving what we're doing and focusing uh, on results on Friday and Saturday nights when you say improving your team as you look ahead to the second half here and what areas do you hope to improve as a hockey team uh, Dan, I think top to bottom. Uh, that's really how we feel. And that has to start number one uh, with your overall uh, will and consistency through each and every 60 minutes. And I think, uh, you know, as you mature as a team, uh, not just the individuals on the team, but as mm -hmm. a team matures and goes through 
uh, some of the ups and downs and difficulties of a season, uh, you learn how to do that. And uh, we have to find that rhythm and work very hard to uh, get into that rhythm as we move into a very difficult second half. Well, I think we saw the maturity level in the first half of the season because one of the signs of this team in the first half of the season was resiliency. I think that comes with maturity. Absolutely. You know, if you look at the positives, uh, the biggest positive to me out of the first half, it's not the record. It's not uh, any of those things. Uh, it was our ability and our will to find ways to win games. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of those games we felt we played very, very well in and were very deserving. Other, uh, some of the other wins, you know, we had to build, scratch, and claw and find a way to win. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, you know, that's, uh, that's significant uh, inside of a locker room. Uh, now we have to turn that into uh, a second-half push. Scott Sandlin has his team playing well. Uh, before the Christmas break, they had won 9 of 11 games. They're highly ranked. They're a contender. Uh, for the Penrose Cup, what kind of a series are you expecting this weekend, Dave? Uh, this will be a great series. Uh, you know, as I, as I stated, I think Scott's team has been one of the best uh, in the country from the start of the year. You know, if you take a look at the difficulty of their schedule and the teams they've played, they've yeah. done an outstanding job. Uh, very deep up front, really sound, solid, uh, and excellent on the back end and in goal. Uh, it really shapes up to be uh, a real challenging and a great series. All right, looking forward to it, Dave, and we'll recap the series next week here on the show. Well, we see a lot of Dave and his assistant coaches, Brad Berry and Dane Jackson, and next here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtall, we'll hear from the coaches' wives and they, how they handle their schedules, their husband's schedules, and their family schedules. That's next here on the show. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Well, what's it like juggling hockey, family, and busy schedules? Maybe the best people to know this are the wives of the North Dakota coaching staff. Here's Katie Hale. I'm here with the ladies of UND Hockey, the coaches' wives, Suzanne Berry, Carrie Jackson, and my sister, Erin Haxtell. We're going to chat with you guys a little bit about what it's like to be married to these coaches. A lot of fans are wondering. So, um, you know, a job like this is really uh, a full-time family job. There's a lot of sacrifice. And maybe each of you can just talk a little bit about how you make it work so your husbands can uh, come here and be successful. Well, I think the biggest thing is uh, our kids, unfortunately, don't have their dad there when they're doing their sporting events. So sometimes that gets to be a little bit difficult for them because they want to have their dad in the stands when they're playing a hockey game or something. Um, although for us, uh, we're lucky because we have a ton of family and friends here. So by having all those people around um, and supporting us, it makes it a lot easier. All right, Mrs. Hackenstack, what about you? <laughs> for us, it's always family time, as, as both of them said. Um, but we get around that by using the time we have. Um, Sunday afternoons are usually... Really the only day. Really the only day <laughs> and predictable. For, for me, the only predict predictable family time. Um, but the other thing that the that might not that people might not realize is that um, summers are not really summer. There's no off season in hockey anymore. And Dave enjoys the road just as much as uh, his his coworkers do. Um, so he's on the road a lot in the summer as well. Now I am constantly trying to figure out what Dave means by his business-like preparation on game day. So Aaron, I'm gonna start with you and give us an insight on what that is. On Friday, he's gone by 7, 7.30. I will see him again at around three after pregame meal here and meetings. He shuts it down completely for a pregame nap until about 4.30. And what that means for me is that there are no other children in the house, the house is quiet. You either go outside or you find something to do that's quiet. And then uh, he does routinely ask me which tie he should wear. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and that's pressure. I've been there. Oh, it's I've pressure. been there. Yes. How about you, Carrie? 
Well, really, they're very similar to what they do. Um, as players, they did it when they played, and now as coaches, they kind of do the same thing, except the difference is they get to the rink a lot earlier on a game day, um, and they come home a little later before their pregame nap, and they do basically get home about 3 o'clock, have their pregame nap. After their nap, um, basically my husband takes a shower, gets ready, and comes down and basically kisses all the kids and yeah. goodbye. Sometimes the kids don't see Dave um, from the time he leaves for the rink on Friday until after the game Saturday night, mm -hmm. if we win. Mm -hmm. yes. Really quickly, what about um, just something that the fans wouldn't know about your husbands? And I'll start with you, Suzanne. Um, Brad is from a very small town of 800 people. And, um, and I think when they came to recruit him, I mean, I, he went to a bigger area. His high school that he went to was about 1,600 people. So it was double the size of his town. Carrie, how about you? Well, my husband loves to play with kids. So when he is home, he is 150% all about the kids. So mm -hmm. he'll do a road hockey game or he'll go to the sporting events, but he literally goes nonstop. This morning he was up at 4.30 going to his son's hockey game at, uh, or his hockey practice at five this morning. So uh, it's a long day for him. But when he's home, he plays with the kids nonstop. Aaron, how about you? Dave and I met water skiing and I taught him how to water ski. He is also from a small town in Alberta that uh, he, and he didn't spend a lot of time around the lakes and. He loves it now. Yeah, he yeah. loves it now. Yeah, yeah I've converted him. He's still him. as good as you though. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'll attest to that as well. <laughs> Thanks you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be a heck of a series this weekend. North Dakota and Minnesota Duluth here in the Ralph. Couple of Bulldogs to watch. Dominic Toninato, the team's leading goal scorer with 13 on the season. Another high scoring Austin Farley, one of uh, many blessed offensive minded players that Scott Sandlin has assembled, assembled rather at Minnesota Duluth. We'll have Friday night's game for you live here on Midco Sports Network. We hope you can join me, Scott Kobarinski, and Katie Hale for our coverage that begins at 7.30. Thanks for watching North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell.